Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Afternoon with T LaShonda's Tea. Hey, 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 hey. All right, so I'm back. I'm not going to keep you long. You know how I do. I'm going to be talking about building your book promotion infrastructure, getting ready to promote your book, part two. And I have those three tools I told you I was going to share with you. I've got three more to share with you. So today, the first one is your website and your blog. Now, I know that right now, some people just don't believe in having a website. They think it's a waste of money. Um, I'm from old school. I believe in having my own home base. And that's what I teach my clients, to have your own space. Because social media isn't forever. When I started online, there was no social media. So that's why I'm still a little old school. I still believe in having my own website. I still believe in investing in that. I think that you need to have your own home base to send your readers to. Then you send them to your social media uh, platforms. So you want your own space in this internet streets. You don't want your um, space to be blowing into someone else. So make sure that you have your own home base, uh, your website, or you can have a blog. If you don't want to pay for it, there's free, free blogs. I used a uh, blogger for years. I still use it for Facebook for Surmax promotion. So definitely uh, get your own space. One of the things that I love about having your own space is nobody can kick you off of it, you know? When you have your own space, you can't go into social media jail because you can post anything that you want on there. You can share anything that you want on there. And what I'm learning now as, my, as an author myself is that I want people to start on my space first and then they can go to my other places. So if you started on my home base, my website first, you could get all the information you need on me. And then if you want to interact with me, you can do it on my blog or you can come into um, my social media platforms. But I want you to start there first to get to know me and I get to know you. So what do I need to do to get started, you're asking? Well, you need your, your own domain name. So as soon as you can, Claim your name. Claim your name before somebody else claims it. Last thing you want to do is have someone else saying this, you, they are you, you know, because people do that. They will buy the domain name when they find out somebody's coming out and then try to charge you out the yin yang for it. So get your domain name. And then um, if you don't have funds right now, get the free sites. Um, I can't think of anything right now of, of, of free sites to try. Oh, my God. My mind just went blank. Um, but there are some free sites that you can try to put your website on. Um, there are some free blogs if you want to try the blog concept. I like the blog because it's more interactive than the, than the website. So my website is set up like a blog. And it has all my information on there. It has all my things. I got my bookstores on there. You can sign up for my newsletters. Um, you can get uh, inspirational things that I post once a month and stuff like that. So get your domain name and then find the free site. So this is what I tell my clients is to research. Talk to your fellow authors. Find out what they're using. Um, and then see what works for your budget. If you don't have a budget, then you're going to have to go with the free site sites but check them out um and then how do you want to use that website so for me i use my website for updates i have my book stored there so if you want to get autographed copies of my book i have a link a uh, page for that if you want to sign up for my newsletter you have to do that i can do monthly sales on my website i can do sneak peeks if i want to share different things about my books so get your website get you a blog that's building your infrastructure. So we're working on building the infrastructure. So when readers come to you, you are ready to let them know who you are. All right. So your number two tool is the email list. Um, if you follow me, if you've been following me all these years, you know I'm always talking about that email list because that is one of the most important tools. Do you have an email list? If you don't have an email list, then today is your day to learn more about the email list. I highly recommend doing your research, finding the email list that works for your budget. There are some free stuff, but as I tell my clients, when you go free, you got to think about the future when you're going to start growing. So you want to get on a, um, a platform that will grow with you. When I first started, I used Constant Contact. I didn't do any research, so I got Constant Contact. 
at that time it was probably one of the most expensive ones but it did what i needed to do for my email list now i use um, mad mimi and mailer light um, there's also mailchimp most of my clients use mailchimp so go do your research talk to your fellow authors and find out what are they using how does it go one of the things i'm saying is about growing is that your email list will grow so you might get the free one and get 500 emails and then when you get up to a thousand can you afford the thousand subscribers so you want to make sure that you can grow with your email list because uh when i was on constant contact it started getting higher and higher as i grew and i was like oh my god you know so i had to switch over because uh it was way out of my budget so you want to make sure that it's in your budget and that you can grow as it goes one of the things i love about my email list is that it's mine nobody can put me in facebook jail i can send out as many emails as i want um and i use it to what to make money that's how i make my money is my email list so i use it to do updates i use it to do newsletters i do monthly sales i can do sneak peeks i can tell my uh my subscribers what's going on with me and my books i just love love the email list so this is what i'm saying to get started again check with your writer friends uh, who are using email management systems and see what they have see what they like see what they don't like write down what you want your email list to do that's the first thing i tell my clients is write down what you want the email list to do because if you don't know what you want then you're going to buy something that you don't need so you want to make sure it does everything that you want for me i wanted my email list to have um landing pages i love constant contact but they were they landing pages were horrible <laughs> i don't know if they've changed or anything but the landing pages were horrible and everybody was having these beautiful landing pages and i wanted a landing page i also wanted to be e-commerce so i can put links in there or i can put buttons in there and that people can click and go buy i wanted that was very important to me with with the emails i want automation some places teach a charge for automation some places don't so you want to make sure that you get what you want in your lit in your news in your email management system so write it down first before you start going look and then what i do is i write them down write down everything that i want it to do and then i go and i print out what they have and then i highlight the ones so it sees who has the most of what i want and then that's who i go with all right again i say use the, your your email for updates and uh, for your newsletter, if you know me, I'm always talking about the newsletter because the newsletter is one of your biggest infrastructure. It's, it's how you bring your readers information about you, how you stay in touch with your readers. And if you have an, a reader magnet, then you can have them sign up and get that reader magnet. So check out the email management system. Make sure you start working on building the infrastructure. And that's part of the infrastructure is that email list. The last tool that I'm going to share with you today um, are your readers. The, yeah, they're kind of tools. <laughs> if you know who, who your book is for, you need to know who your book is for before you can start marketing to anybody. I have this with my clients all the time. They think their book is for everybody. And we have to take it down a little bit, take it down a little bit. And they're like, why can't it be for everybody? Because you can't promote to everybody. You need to be able to know who you, who your reader is if you niche it completely down. Because then you can find out what platforms your readers are hanging out on. You can find out what conferences they're going to. You can find out uh, what bookstores they like. You can find out... Um, what blogs they're reading what podcasts they're reading what magazines they're reading if it's for everybody you're gonna be working really hard <laughs> so i don't re recommend that for you your readers are so important to know and it takes time you're not gonna figure it all out at one time you know sometimes you can but most times it's going to take a minute to figure out who your readers are so maybe you might be writing fantasy and you're thinking oh, okay i want the the teenagers but find out that maybe women 30 and up are reading your book so that changes who your reader is because once you put the book out there the people who are buying it become your readers that who are actually reading the story and so who you think right now before the book comes out might be totally different when the book comes out so you want to know going in what genre do you write um who are the top authors in that genre 
where do these authors hang out at? I just told somebody the other day, are you hanging out where these top authors are hanging out at? Because that's where you want to start. You're hanging out where they're hanging out. What type of readers do you have? Is your reader a print reader? Is your reader an ebook reader? Are they an audio book reader? Are they like my book readers, episodic readers? Where do the readers buy their books? Are they buying it online? Are they going to bookstores? Are they getting the books from the libraries? You need to know all this information before your book comes out. Because once it comes out, you're not going to have time to be trying to do all that research. You're going to be trying to get in front of those readers. And so some of the reader hangouts right now that you can try are Goodreads. Are you on Goodreads? Have you signed up, made up, um, got you a place on Goodreads? Hold on a second. Excuse me. My throat just got real dry. Um, are you on blogs? What reader blogs are you are you reading? What platforms are you on social media? Are they on Facebook? Uh, are your are all your readers on Instagram? Are they on TikTok? You need to know this stuff going in. Do you uh, are your readers on libraries? Do they love libraries? Um, do they go to schools? Are they in schools? Um, are they what literary events are they go are are they going to? This is so important to know when um, when it comes to your readership. And so you want to start building all this stuff to now before the book releases. As I said, once the book releases, you'll see more, your readership changing as you start selling books to readers because you'll see, you'll get a feel of. Right now, this is just an idea of who you think it's going to be. But when they start buying the book, then you can say, oh, okay, I was thinking, teen like I said, I'm thinking teenagers, but actually... 30 and 35 year olds are reading my books and so you want to know <laughs> hey miss danielle you want to know who that reader is um and then you when you once the book comes out you're going to start really getting more information about your reader the demographics of your reader right now you're just getting the idea who you think this book is for but as you grow you'll see and you'll see as you grow your readership changing over and over again because your readers will grow with you all right so those are my three tips three tools i'll be back next next tuesday same bedtime to tell you more three more tools I uh, appreciate you popping in, Danielle, and, um, and checking out the video with me. Um, for those who have questions that are watching the video after I leave her, put your questions in the, in the comments. I definitely answer questions. We had a few people that asked some questions last time. If you have not seen the first video, go to my page and watch the first video. There will be four videos in this series, so we want to make sure you catch all of them because you need your book promotion infrastructure getting it, putting it together i don't recommend getting out here just winging it in and being overwhelmed with promotion if you have your infrastructure together you will have a hard you'll have a better chance of promoting you will be consistent and your readership will start growing because you have all this stuff set up trying to set up a website after you release a book it's, oh my goodness, it's crazy. Trying to set up that email list after you release the book is crazy because you've already sold books. And now you're trying to get in front of those people and tell them to sign up for your email list. Whereas if you had that already set up, that's in the back of your book. When your book, when they buy that book, hopefully at the end, when they enjoy the book, they go to the end of the book. You telling them, hey, go to my website, sign up for my email list, get this freebie. You know, you want to make sure that you have all that stuff set up inside your book before it comes out. That's part of the infrastructure. One of the things I'm learning that as an author is that you want to have these readers coming back. And they do that at the back end matter. They call that book the back end matter of your books. You have all that set up, boom, you got it. You got those readers. They're gonna they're gonna sign up for it. They're gonna sign up for your email list. They know what to do. You're not just chasing people. They're gonna be they're gonna find that out because they already bought the book. So we're gonna be building your infrastructure this month getting you ready for um promoting your book if you got a book coming out in july you will be ready you will be ready in july for this book to come out um and no you're not too seasoned to refresh um danielle sometimes people start um you start i have much um i remember admiration for people who just put it out there <laughs> go for it i know i kept my books in the closet for a long time so if you already are out here and you're promoting, you can still do this. You can take time once a month and set your infrastructure up. So when you get ready for the next book, 
it's ready it's ready it's going you got your website you got your plan last week we talked about your promotion plan so now we're talking about your website we talk about your email list and we talk about those readers because those readers are so important so many people miss the reader step because they just like well everybody gonna buy my book and everybody does not buy your book that's the hardest part about promoting a book is learning that everybody doesn't buy your book you want them to but they don't and so you're like well why not why are, when i published my first book uh building online relationships i just knew every writer that i ever met in my life was gonna buy my book and i was gonna be on the new york bestsellers list i was gonna make tons and tons and tons of money and real life came to me <laughs> My husband, I always tell the story of my husband going, did you seriously think? I was like, yes, I did think that it was going to hit the New York bestsellers list. Why not? That's how big you're supposed to dream as a writer. But I realized that I was trying to sell my book to people who are already published. They already had the book, had the, the system already down packed. They didn't need my book. But those people who were new to this business, that's who my first clients were. That's who the first readers were they needed they needed the book and then there were a few people like danielle was saying who are seasoned and who wanted a refresh you want a new thing new content so i was like okay so i got two readerships and then as i started selling more books i realized that i was talking to business owners like me i had store make promotion and the magazine that's why i wrote the book from the magazine experience and i realized that there were some there were a set of of readers who were business owners who wanted to learn how to promote their business online so i had three different readers and you know when i first started i told you the book was for all the readers all the authors <laughs> that's what i thought it was for when i first got started and then i learned when people start buying the book who the book really was for it was for the newbie who said okay i have no clue lashon to what do i need to do then it was for the seasoned author who said you know what i need some new ideas some fresh ideas give me something and then that third person was the the business owner who was like lashonda i am online but i have no idea on how to promote my business online those were my three readers and so i was like okay so now i know who these people are now i need know how to change my message for those newbies i have a message for those who are seasoned authors and then i have a message for those who are business owners but it took time to get to that point and I, like i said i didn't come out there with that the first day <laughs> now i can teach you that so you can be ready for the first day i wasn't ready because i was like you oh it's for everybody <laughs> so i had to learn that and so i'm teaching you my lessons my mistakes so you don't have to do that you don't have to have those mistakes you don't have to have those hard ain't nobody buying my book conversations with yourself you're gonna be like yes I got all these books out here selling. I'm doing great because that's what I want you to do. I want you to do great. Now I know when I go places, who is my readers? When someone says, do you want to come to this event? And they're all seasoned authors. If I go in there and I'll know newbies are in there, then I know I got to cater to the seasoned author person. If I go to a place and it's all newbies, then I know I got to cater to the newbie people. If I'm working, going into a business meeting, then I know I got to work with the business people. You know your audience, know who you, the book is for, uh, get your infrastructure set up so when you release, you're releasing to your readership, not to the win, not to everybody, but to your readership. So thank you so much for listening to this video watching this video if you're watching it and if you need more help with me definitely um follow this page i have i'm going to be doing a little more videos follow my um youtube page i have a lot more promotion videos on there teaching you promotion if you want to work with me schedule your virtual t promotion strategy session with me let's get your books out here for these readers because somebody needs your book Remember that somebody needs your book, but they can't buy it unless you tell them about it. So go out there and promote that book. And you, you have a great day, and thank you for coming. See you next Tuesday.